In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a nighttime reading bookmark. For this project, you'll need two pieces of fabric that are about the same size, a sewing needle, a safety pin, an LED with the legs bent, a battery holder, and conductive thread. I'm going to lay out my, my circuit so I can get a feel for how far I'm going to sew. The round leg of the LED is my negative terminal, and the square leg of the LED is my positive. Negative to negative, positive to positive. So we're going to need to also add a switch. Otherwise, our battery is just going to burn out and our light will always be on. We're going to use a safety pin as our switch. It's going to operate on a little hinge where that round circle is. Here we go. So the safety pin will be able to slide back and forth to turn the light on and off. So I threaded my needle. See? I'm going to need to make a, a knot in the end of my needle. So I find the end of the thread. It could be that one, or let's go with the longer piece. I'm going to wrap it around my fingers really loosely so that I can make a knot out of the end of my string. And you can do, wrap it once, twice, maybe three times, depending on how big you want your knot to be. And once you have a knot at the very end, you know you're going to be able to have a good start. There it is. So once I have my knot, I'm going to start to attach the battery holder to the fabric. And I start by sewing through one end of the battery holder. Once I have that, I'm going to go through the fabric. takes a little practice, but you'll get used to it. You want to sew through the battery holder enough time so that your needle doesn't fit through that hole anymore. That's how you know you have a secure connection. It's going to also bear the weight of the battery, so those stitches have to be strong. Make sure they're not terribly loose. Yeah, I, I think I can still get my needle through this hole, so maybe two or three times is enough to anchor it to the fabric. Yeah, I, I can't get it in there anymore, so I guess we'll call it three times. Now I'm going to do a running stitch up to where my LED's negative terminal will be. Now remember, the negative terminal is the round one. But even if you forget and you make a mistake and you sew the positive to it, just turn your battery over. It'll make sense once you try it out. So let's see. Square is positive oh, oh positive okay so the positive will touch the bottom part okay so then I'll do plus side down when I put the battery in then if I use the round the round terminal then it will be the negative side hmm which one do I want let's go with the negative so I'm gonna go around the loop that round little loop there enough times to securely hold my LED in place the more connections you have to this leg, the more reliable your light bulb is going to be. You definitely don't want to be reading late at night and have it flickering around. So I've attached my LED pretty well. I'm going to turn my piece over. I'm going to sew through the fabric just a little bit and make a knot in the big loop that's left over. You can choose how many times you want to go through the loop to make your knot, but remember, you don't want any stray strings that are going to muck up your circuit. They definitely can't have long ends that could possibly cross over to the this, this circuit thread that's going to be on the opposite side. So try to make it as neat and as tidy as you can. So I have a really small knot there, and I'm going to cut it close close to the end of the knot. If you're worried about it, have it come, becoming unraveled, 
we can take clear nail polish and just dab a little bit on to make sure that that knot doesn't come undone. Now let's clip that thread too. Because the fewer threads you have hanging off, the more likely it is you're going to have a circuit that's a solid circuit and it's not going to uh, flicker on and off or short out on you. Let's work on our switch now. So we're going to begin by also sewing down the battery ends and then we're going to sew to the loop at the end of the safety pin. So I have my knot at the end of my thread. I'm going to cut the tail off just for consistency sake because you know we don't want any loose tails hanging around our circuit. And then I'm going to sew the other end of the battery holder onto the fabric. I'm going to start by going through the end of the battery holder, through the fabric this time. And I'm going to go through maybe two or three times until my needle can't pass through that hole anymore. So I'm going to finish attaching the battery holder to the fabric. I'm going to make a couple running stitches just to give me a little bit of space between the battery holder and the end of the switch. And I'm going to go through the, the safety pin just like it was a bead. And then I'm going to loop around the safety pin end through the fabric a few times until I know that I have a really secure hinge for the safety pin to swing on. The electricity is going to pass through the safety pin it's a pretty good conductor, and since it's stiff, it can act as a door to turn on and off. It's essentially a switch. When I feel like I have it secure enough, I'm going to push my needle in through the fabric sideways so that I can begin to create a knot. If I sew in the same place a few times, it acts as a knot so there's less knots for you to tie if it's not a strength of yours. Now I can cut that and if I'm really worried about it, I can always put clear nail polish on it to keep it from unraveling. So now I'm going to affix the positive end of my LED to my fabric. I put a knot in my thread. I went through the fabric, through the LED. I'm going through the fabric again and again and again. Oh, oh that tail got in the way. I probably should have clipped that. The other thing that happened is my needle fell off the thread. So this is a good time to show you how to thread your needle you have a whole bunch of strands together and when you're threading it you want to twist those strands together so they aren't so spread out you want a point as pointy as you can to fit through the eye of your needle it takes a, a little bit of practice if you get enough strands through the needle you don't even have to get all of them you can see I didn't get all of them there but you pull them all through and eventually they'll all work their way through the needle. It doesn't have to be pretty. There we go. So I'm going to continue affixing my LED to the fabric through the positive terminal. It's actually identical to the way we sewed the safety pin onto the fabric. Oh, see, I should have cut that. Good riddance. When I feel like I have enough security keeping that LED in place, I'm going to change the direction that I'm sewing. And I'm going to begin a running stitch to a really, really important part of this project. 
to the pad that the safety pin is going to make contact with. It just means I sew in the same place over and over Swing the safety pin to find out where your pad is going to be. Then sew the connective thread over and over and over to right where the safety pin touches. That way it'll be able to switch on when your safety pin is there. It helps me to turn the work so I can get a better grip on it. Feel free to turn your work in order for it to make sense to you. So every time I sew, I just move over maybe a millimeter or two. And I make sure no, that I have a little square left you. over no. of conductive thread. That kind of thing and makes the sense safety to pin will be able to rest right on that. Okay. And it'll create to a, a switch. And my circuit will be complete. Yeah, I mean, well, like when the safety you know, pin moves it off the actually, conductive thread, then it'll break the circuit. Uh, and it'll be switching it off. It's hard to actually draw stuff on an iPad, but to simply have to um, view it. You know, it, it works. You know, like you go to show something to a customer, you want to go out on the floor, and then you'd still be able to look at what you're doing. When you did. you think you're finished, you can do the this, this sew up of your choice to end your thread, tie a knot, and then you can test out if you've made it in the right place. Let's see how we do. Oh, it looks great. So it looks like our circuit will be complete. Now we'll be able to try it with a battery because it goes all the way around in a circle. So now comes the bookmark part of the bookmark. I have my fabric, I'm gonna lay it on top to make sure and to measure where the LED is. Then I can take scissors and make a tiny hole that the LED will pop through. This way it'll cover all of that wiring and the bag, it'll look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. If you want to embroider the front of it, you can. There it is. I'm going to use a green contrasting thread so you can see how I sew. I start off with my knot, just like with the stainless steel thread. But I'm going to hide the knot on the inside of the bookmark, just so it looks a little nicer. If you're still concerned about it unraveling, clear nail polish that. I'm going to sew around the edge of the bookmark, all the way around. I plan to leave an opening so that I can get the battery in and out, and then I'll be able to move the safety pin inside to switch it on and off. We'll get to that part later. This might take a while, so I'm going to skip ahead. So I sewed all the way around and I'm ready to cut my thread. I left an opening in the back so that I could slide the safety pin in and out and so that I could change the battery if need be. It's got its own little pocket, but I sewed around the edge of the top piece of fabric so that it'll still look like it's a sewn bookmark. Pretty clever, huh? Happy reading.